most important thing we do here is to help people. And lung cancer is a devastating disease. More people die of lung cancer than colorectal, prostate, and breast combined. So there's a big problem. The other component that's a problem is the overall five-year survival rate is about 15 to 16 percent. That hasn't changed mostly in the last 50 years. And the reason is because most symptoms occur after spread. That's a higher stage. In the past, a lesion would be too small to get to or too difficult to get to, and we'd have to watch and, and follow it up on subsequent scans. The waiting game mentally is a terrible thing to go through as a patient. Not to mention the lost time that sort of evaporates around figuring out the right treatment. So how do you fix that? How do you improve that? It's by finding it earlier. Now with the spin drive, technology is allowing us to hopefully shift that survival curve to where we can get a higher level of early detection, earlier stage one lung cancers, and therefore affect a change in overall survival. We can get to those lesions now, find out earlier, and either show that this particular area is not a worry, or if it is a cancer, we're treating it at a much earlier time. From physician perspective, um, I don't go in and tell them that, uh, well, I'm sorry, we just don't have any of the modalities and we're gonna have to wait and do another CT scan. I have something more which I can potentially use uh, to try to get to those uh, stubborn peripheral lung nodules, which has been a frustrating story for all lung doctors for years. Uh, and, um, and hopefully confidently diagnose that and, uh, and help to treat it. When a patient comes in as an outpatient, uh, it's done under conscious sedation, so no major morbidity. It's not a surgery, it's a procedure. We put the pads on, they go for a CAT scan. Uh, the CAT scan is really utilized along with the pads to create a magnetic field that uh, generates air passages in order to do an accurate mapping. Now with the spin drive, we're able to reconstruct a pathway to get to these peripheral uh, lesions. The only thing you have is you have a road map, a GPS, to help you get lesions that you never were able to reach. So you're able to guide your instrumentation with the always uh, on tip track devices so we see exactly where we're going. And then really the traditional bronchoscopic method follows uh, where we introduce the bronchoscope. The equipment that I'm using to navigate myself to the target uh, is the one that I'm using to sample. One nice thing about the instruments we use with the Varin technology is that's the same ones we use in the regular bronchoscope. It's not a new technique to learn. You use the same graspers, forceps, needles, and brushes that you use in the standard bronchoscopy. So there's not a whole big learning curve on new instrumentations. A big benefit of this new technology is their uh, tip track instrument. So we are really, uh, all the forceps and the needles and, uh, and the brushes that we have, they have the sensors on the tip of that. So that certainly does help to, uh, to increase the accuracy and it's very, very, very operator friendly. It's easier to use, it saves time, it minimizes the sedation, uh, it, uh, it gives me what I need. I think Veron uh, spin drive has been quite, uh, quite innovative and I think navigation technology is not too far away from uh, becoming a standard of care. And so this IG4 system is better for the patient. It takes our program that's already considered one of the best regionally and puts us even at a higher level. To bring together a platform that looks at lung, looks at liver, has the ability to do kidney work, ablations, I mean, that's world class. That, that's an example of a commitment to bringing the very best to the community.